A compression spring is needed to fit over a 0.5 inch diameter rod. To allow for some clearance, the inside diameter of the spring is to be 0.6 inches. This spring that has a spring index of 10 is used in a machine that will compress it from a free length of 5 inches through a stroke of 3 inches to its solid length. The spring needs to have squared and ground ends, be unpinned and made from cold drawn wire. What's the fatigue factor of safety when repeatedly cycled from free length to solid length using the Gerber Zimmerli fatigue failure criterion? This is the first example for the fatigue failure for springs main video, link below. If we look at the Gerber factor of safety expression, we see that we need the torsional modulus of rupture, the shearing endurance strength, and the mean and alternating torsional shearing stresses. From the main video, we know that a good estimate for the torsional modulus of rupture is 67% of the ultimate strength. To calculate the ultimate strength, we need to find the A coefficient and the M exponent for cold drawn wire. We also need the wire diameter. If the inner diameter has to be 0.6 inches and the coil diameter is 10 times the wire diameter, the wire diameter is 0.06 repeating inches. The ultimate strength is therefore 234.2 KSI. With this value and therefore the torsional modulus of rupture, we can use the Zimmerli data, SSA and SSM, to find the shearing endurance limit. Of course, the expression we use to find this endurance limit also corresponds with the Gerber criterion. If the compression of the spring goes from its free length, zero stress, to its solid length, tau sub s, then both the mean and the alternating stress will be tau s divided by two. The maximum stress, or the stress at the solid length, will happen when the force reaches the value needed to compress the spring to its solid length. For the spring constant of the spring, we need the coil diameter, capital D, the shear modulus for cold drawn wire for diameters between 64 and 125 thousandths of an inch, and the number of active coils. If the solid length is equal to the number of total coils times the diameter for a squared and ground spring, and for that type of spring, the number of active coils is two fewer than the total number of coils. Since the top and the bottom coil are not resisting the compression, we can use these values to find the spring constant, the force to solid length, and with the curvature correction factor Kb, the maximum shearing stress. The alternating and mean shearing stresses are therefore half of that value, and we now have everything we need to calculate the Gerber fatigue factor of safety. For another example on springs fatigue using the Zimmerli data, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.